very much for being here. My name is Jay Merelu. You know, uh, I mean, the topic of this talk is kind of weird, but it's not so weird. You know, if you think about people as computing nodes, it's, it's something that, uh, as it happens with almost every other idea, has come up in science fiction uh, a long time ago. I don't know if you heard about this, this novel, Wolf Spain. Have you heard of that one? It's, a, it's an excellent novel. It's completely forgotten. But it's about, you know, it's a post-apocalyptic world where there are some aliens taken care of. It's kind of like Matrix, but it's, instead of using people for, for, you know, for power, they use it for computing power. So it, it's an idea that, that has been there for a long time. It's kind of like what I'm going to talk about. Kind of, but not quite. So, my name is Jay Merello. I work at the University of Granada. I'm a professor there. I also am, uh, I am so coordinate something called the Free Software Office at the University of Granada and many other things. Uh, I'm also in npm.js with this team, and I'm JJ at GitHub. Yes, I was there very early. <laughs> this is the talk. So my talk is exactly there. So please, if you have any computing device, any mobile or laptop, uh, tablet, whatever, please go there so you can follow the talk and also do other things. The thing about computing cycles, you know, it, Yes, give me one second. I think something's not... Okay, yeah. So the thing with computing cycles is that we all need more. So it's something that we all need. At the University of Granada, we, we, we are a public university there. We don't have a lot of money for doing, uh, for doing experiments and that kind of thing. So at one particular time, what we tried to do was to, to kind of uh, manage to get as many computing cycles as possible, and if possible, for free. So that, that's something we wanted to do. We have, been, uh, we have been doing this kind of thing for a long time, you know, parallel computing, distributed computing, that kind of thing. But uh, right uh, with here, we wanted to, to have even more. And also, as I said, for free. So the good thing is that we all have plenty. We, we have plenty of computing cycles. They're everywhere. So, I mean, for instance, I have two mobile phones. I have the laptop. You know, in a single home, you can have like, like three, four, five octa-core, quad-core computing devices everywhere. So we all have a lot. The only thing is that we have, uh, you have to find a way to leverage those cycles. You have to find a way to, to uh, really people giving you those, those cycles in a way that you can, you can use them and you can use them for, for science. The thing is, you see, this is the actual experiment I'm running. So if you, if you are uh, visiting this, this talk, you're actually participating in the experiment. And this is how it's going. So uh, it's running a node of the experiment in my laptop. It's probably also running a node of experiment in your laptops or whatever. So this is in real time what's happening. So it's doing stuff. Uh, I will go back to that later on. So if you are doing that, very, thanks a lot for helping. So it's an experiment. It's been low, and I'm going to publish it later on. But the thing is, why, why did you do it? So uh, I should have changed this. Uh, you get the idea, right? What did you do? You probably didn't do it. Because, you know, some guy comes up, you don't know him, you, you know what he's all about, maybe you think that I am bit mining, using your, your devices, whatever. So you probably didn't, right? But that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's fair enough, because, because at the end of the day, uh, you are giving me some computing cycles. Why would you do that? You might have many reasons, like, look like a good idea, you know, it's there, he's giving the talk, I want to see what, what's going on, I want to, to know one slide before you know, he, he actually presents it. I asked nicely, I told you, please do this, you know. Maybe you consider me a, a good person, or maybe somebody asks you, maybe using a WhatsApp group or a Slack group or whatever. But just because, you just did it. My point is, you do or you don't. But your decision is computing. You're computing. You are processing what I'm saying. You are processing what you see. You're processing all the context, all the social context, in which this, this request for help appears. And since you compute, computing is at the end of the day processing information, and it's a pattern, and it's something that can be measured. You just, now you know a little bit what all this is about. Uh, this is going slower.
something is slightly askew. OK, so this is an evolutionary algorithm, right? So what I'm running is an evolutionary algorithm. You probably don't know what it's all about, but the basic idea is that uh, you want to find a solution to something, and when you want to find a solution to something, what you do is you uh, create a population of possible solutions, you evaluate the solutions, you make them reproduce, you make them mix with each other, you make them change, you select some of them that are good enough, you discard those that are not good enough. So what I'm telling you now is that this is an evolutionary algorithm. So what you are having in every, in every device that you are running, you are having a little population. And that population is interchanging uh, individuals with other, other uh, nodes that are also participating in the same thing. The evolutionary algorithm is solving some problem which is called HIFF, hierarchical if and only if. Never mind, it's a difficult problem. Uh, I chose this problem just because it wasn't going to finish in the time when I was giving this talk, so it might take something like one hour for 10 or for 20 computers to, to solve the problem. I don't think that the solution is around 2,300. I think it's 2,314. So if it goes up the scale, that means that it's finding the solution. So you know a little bit more about this, right? So you have more, more information. You, you can decide. You, you have more, more elements of decision. So how, and this is the, oh, this is awful. So I can see that. Anyway, so it's basically written in, in JavaScript in the, in the client. It's node in the server, obviously. This is the server side. So what it's doing is sending a put rest command into the server. It's sending only one element, only one individual of that population into the server. It's getting one individual. It's sending back one individual. So every time you run a, a, few, a, few, uh, a few generations of that evolutionary algorithm, you send something, you get something back. It's not happening all the time, right? So I, I don't want to overload the server. We don't really need, need to interchange a lot of information. But you see that uh, what it's saying, OK, if you're running this particular experiment, then, then you will have uh, uh, you will have the, this chromosome sent back using rest.send. This is Express, it's, it's uh, pretty, pretty vanilla uh, Express uh, REST interface. This is the, coming up, the client code. So the client code, what it's doing is sending an Ajax request to the, to the server. It's getting uh, an individual back. And what it's doing, you can see it there, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, we got a data structure, which is a population. It's adding one into the population and taking out the last individual in the population, so, uh, which is supposed to be the worst. So you see the code. You have seen the code. It's also open source. Everything is, is in, in, in a GitHub uh, account, so it's open code. So you kind of know what's going on. That actually is slow. It's coming. So maybe you want to try now, right? So here's again the, the URL, right? That's a short URL. Maybe you want to try now, because you know what's going on, right? You, I, I mean, I have been telling you what's, what's going on. It's open source. I mean, you, you could have look, look it up. It's not as if I am doing something that you don't know what's, what's going on. I'm not bit mining. Or I'm not running a, a, a distributed denial of service attack, whatever. It so happened that. Now you trust me. We have developed a certain trust relationship because you know what's going on. So you say, OK, uh, so this guy, uh, I mean, he, he doesn't seem like he's doing anything nasty to, to my, my uh, device. So I mean, let's give it a chance. Why not? Uh, so it happens that, take into account that we are talking about a meta computer here. So we are creating a distributed computer with many nodes, right? And what I'm saying is that trust has an influence on the performance of that computer. This is actually quite important, because you're not talking about a simple technical system. You're not saying, I'm going to have this computer with so many uh, uh, teraflops or whatever. What I'm saying is the teraflops of that distributed computer is going to depend on how much you trust the source of the URL you have to participate in, right? This is something that nobody has done so far. I mean, there, there have been volunteer computing experiments. There have been also many volunteer computing startups that wanted to pay for this kind of thing. All of them have failed. Every single one of them has failed. I mean, they, they haven't managed to, to fly. Why? 
because they didn't, they didn't uh, take into account this, this social part of the computer. Maybe I should go back here to see if it goes a little bit faster. It's kind of, I don't know what's going on. There's another thing. Probably you tried before, I say, okay, but I see this, nah, it's not important. But how, long, how long have you been participating in this? How long have you been visiting this, this website? How, how long have you been looking at this graph over here that doesn't seem to move? Well, it also depends on many other social factors. Maybe you, you, are, you have no interest on what I'm saying. Maybe you are you know, you're, you're thinking about something else. Maybe you just go to another, uh, another tab in the, in the browser, since this is not uh, using a worker. Uh, a web worker, I mean, it will, it will just stop running. But the interesting thing is that the attention you pay to this, to this kind of experiment, the amount of time you devote to the experiment, is pretty much the same as any other thing you do on the web, or the time you devote, for instance, to games, right? So if you are going to play on the web, you will, I mean, it's not, uh, I'm not saying that it's going to be of the same order, but the modeling of the, of the I mean, the, the shape, the distribution of times all the people is going to devote to this is going to behave more or less like a game. That's interesting because we know how games work. I mean, there's been a, a, a huge amount of uh, work uh, because all the, all the game companies, what, they are analyzing big, big data on, on what the users are doing. So we, we know we have uh, pretty good statistical models on what the, what the people, how people behave and how much time they are going to behave. I mean, how, how much time they're going to devote to the experiment and how long uh, they are going to stay there. So that means that we have good enough data to know this computing device, this computing device which is formed by people and also by, by the computers, how, how is it going to behave? Uh, right. So, but the, the thing about this, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that uh, probably we know about this, right? So this is bad news. The bad news is that people are not going to devote a long time. So they're not, to, they're not going to spend like 20 minutes looking at this. I mean, it's boring. They're going to spend 30 seconds or one minute or whatever. Good, good thing is it's coming, right? So it can actually be a game. So you don't need to put, and, and there, there's nothing that requires you to put anything on the screen. In fact, I could, I could put nothing at all. I could just put a bag there and tell people, okay, visit this. You're going to start running things. But of course, that goes against trust, right? Because uh, probably uh, most of you know how to use the, these debugging tools of, of Chrome, of uh, Chromium, or Firefox. You will start to see traffic on the network and say, oh, uh, hey, what's going on? You're doing stuff here. So that would go against that. But we can actually turn this into a kind of game because you are participating in an experiment. You are participating in an experiment with other people. You are devoting so much time. So maybe we could use kind of you know, badges, gamification, things like that. Once again, every little thing we do or we don't do is going to have an influence on the computing power of the whole system. So at the end of the day, what I am saying is it's also very interesting that uh, you are the computing node, right? So you are going to be the computing node because you are going to decide what's going on. But you can also do more things. I have seen that some of you were looking at the device and were saying, okay, this is not working. You know, this is not going up. What's going on here? There is not much you can do here. You can reload the page, right? So when you reload the page, what you are doing actually is you're killing the whole population and you're creating a new population from scratch. Once again, it's going to get some input from there. So you are creating diversity. So it's not a lot of leverage. You can also uh, open a, a different browser. You can open a different window, running a browser. So it, it, it's, not, it's not running enough. I, I will need more computing. You can tell someone else. You can say, OK, this is cool. So there are very few things you can do. But all of those things make you a computing node, make you uh, uh, a part of this whole computer, which is extending its node, changing, nodes, uh, changing the number of nodes all the time, changing the number of computers you are, you're having. So the thing is, actually, and it's kind of interesting because it's so slow. I mean, it's never happened before. It's probably because it's, it's uh, consuming a lot of memory on the client side. So
Uh, maybe it's crashing. Okay. So you, you're you're actually seeing the algorithm, and you're you are running the meta algorithm. So you are seeing how the algorithm is working, and you are doing something about the algorithm. So that that's an interesting thing. You are also becoming a part of the solution of the uh, algorithm because you see, okay, this is not running. I need more computer power. Uh, you're using your visual interface to do that kind of thing. So you run this this kind of meta algorithm, and that makes you also part of of the of the computing system. Uh, okay, I go here. So my point is, I'm going to, I'm going to to leave the the slides because it's not, you know, my my computer physically crashed like two minutes ago. I, I was running down the aisle and all of a sudden the straps of my backpack just fell, just uh, burned, so it all came down. I'm pretty happy that it's working. Oh no. Oh, wow. So, I'm going to be very fast here because uh, probably it's running out of memory or something like that, so it's a big population. So the thing is that you are running the meta algorithm. The good thing about this is that any, anything you do, this volunteer computing thing is turning you into a computing node because you decide whether to participate or not, or, uh, and then once you're participating, you decide what to do with it. Then the, the thing is that uh, you have to be very transparent about this. Not only do you have to be transparent with the source code, you have to, to be also very transparent with the result. So uh, my research group, what they do is uh, we do open science, so that means that all the data I, I gather with this, after anonymizing the IPs and everything like that, uh, we're going to publish it on the, on the GitHub server, so you can, you can come back to, the, to, the, to, this, uh, to this repository and check out what, what the, the result of the... Uh, we also publish the paper openly, we write the papers openly, so you can go to the repository of, of our research group and see what's going on. So I think that this is very important, and being transparent is quite the, the, the most important thing that you can, you can do uh, with, uh, with this kind of volunteer uh, computing systems. And eventually, uh, you also, depending on the kind of algorithm, you have to use some kind of visual cues to know, uh, I mean, to let the people know how the algorithm is doing. So they can use whatever leverage they have, like reloading, like opening different windows, like telling someone else, whatever leverage they have, they, they can use it to, to enhance the computing power of the whole system. So, uh, that's basically it. The address of, the, of, the, of this uh, repository is down there. You probably can see it in your, in your own device. Uh, this is all free, of course. It's got a free license. I'm also using free uh, license uh, pictures from, from Flickr. All the credits are there. So I'm sorry for, for the problems that the, I have had. Thank you very much anyway for being here. I, I will answer any questions you have.